I'm Amy, and what are my favorite free family history websites and ones worth paying for? Today, I'm gonna to give you 25 of my very favorite ones, the ones that I use daily, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, but I don't think there's anything here that I don't use probably less than once a month. And these are the ones that are my go-to websites. There's a lot of other kind of more obscure ones out there, especially for family history research, but these are my ones that I use every day. Most of them are free, a couple of them cost, and I will tell you why I think they may be worth the money to you. So let's dive in. All right, number one, number one is Ancestry. Yes, Ancestry costs, Ancestry isn't free, I use it every day. I build all my client trees there. I have my own tree there. It's where I work on family history. Ancestry has tons of records. They have so, so many records. And I just like the interface. It makes sense to me. It's easy for me to use. And it's where I build my family trees. All right, I will tell you that they released a new Pro Tools, which is an additional um, subscription. I really don't use those pro tools. So if you're wondering if you ought to spend the money on them or not, they can be really cool, but you don't need them in order to function on the site. I have another video that goes into the pro tools if you wanna check that out. But anyway, I am a huge fan of Ancestry. All right, my next one is the Family Search Catalog. I am in the Family Search Catalog all the time. The Family Search Catalog, Family Search actually is my next three sites, but there's different aspects of them, and I wanted to divide them up for you so that you could see what you can do on Family Search. I am most frequently in the catalog. The Family Search Catalog helps me know whether or not I am really kind of finding everything that I need to find and maybe whether or not I have any holes and let me show you why. So let's say I wanna find records for Jefferson, Kansas. All right, I type in that and I see Jefferson, Kansas from the drop down menu. Always use that, click search. And now I have all of the records that Family Search has for Jefferson, Kansas. And if I want to, like here's some probate records, if I want to open that up, I see they have four different record groups of probate records. This helps me kind of know a little bit better whether maybe I'm missing something. I don't find that quite as true on Ancestry. They have some additional records there and some things that are not on Family Search but I find it's a little bit more difficult, even if I use the Ancestry catalog, to feel like I'm being more thorough in my searching. So anyway, love the Family Search catalog. There are a number of records that are in there that have not yet been indexed. You will not find them with a regular search. You gotta manually go in and look at them particularly deeds. The next one is the Family Search Wiki. Now the Family Search Wiki is gold and I actually get to it frequently another way. You can go this way. You can, for instance, click North America, go all the way down to the United States, pick a state like Oregon, and now I see what they have for Oregon. There's some guides to research, some great research tools here, as well as some additional resources. Now, if I want to go to a particular county, I can click the county and now I have the county courthouse information, when they started recording certain types of records, boundary changes, whether or not there's some record loss like the courthouse burned down, um, as well as some other timeline information. And then I have different record groups like military records. Sometimes these are all full, it just kind of depends. But one of the other things that, like I mentioned before, for instance, here are some births and death records at Ancestry. And then it has a little dollar sign noting that if you want to look at those records, or you're going to need to pay for it. Love the collaborative effort of the wiki pages. So love this. I just am a huge fan of the Family Search Wiki. All right, the next one is just Family Search in general. Now, the Family Search tree is a collaborative effort, and a lot of people find it frustrating and don't want to participate in the tree, which I understand that, that's fine. Um, however, I frequently go in there because a lot of people are collaborative, collaborating and they're adding photographs and they're adding family stories. Maybe they are adding a pictures of a family Bible, awesome things that you may not find anywhere else. So a lot of times I will search for an individual here on Family Search to see what I can find for that person if somebody else is working on them and if they have found some information that I have yet to find. All right, next we've got newspaper.com. Newspapers.com is one of many newspaper websites. It's my favorite, I do pay for it. 
However, if you have the all access subscription to Ancestry, guess what? You get it for free. And if you're not using it, shame on you, use it. Um, newspapers.com is super easy to navigate. I think it's the easiest way for me to find newspaper articles. And newspapers tell so many stories about your family that you're not gonna hear anywhere else. They give you little details. Obituaries can give you information on relationships and provide women's maiden names, all kinds of great stuff. Check out newspapers. My next most common site, my number six is Google Maps. If I want to figure out, okay, how far was it from here to here? Or where is this in the state? I put it into the map and figure it out. Use it all the time. And next is Google Search. In all honesty, this probably ought to be further up the list. I use Google Search all the time for lots of different things. I use it to find wiki pages, the Family Search wiki pages. I use it to Google like everything. It actually should probably be maybe right next to Ancestry because I probably use it the most. You can use any search engine. It doesn't have to be Google, but that's where I'm at. Vital Check. Vital Check is a place where you can order in the United States birth, marriage, or death records. Now, they're going to give you an additional charge. You may be better off ordering them from the county or from the state, but frequently they're a little quicker than those services are. And so you might find that it's worth the extra money to pay and order them through Vital Check. So Vital Check, navigating the site is free, but ordering the record is not. All right, the next one is actually the county sites because I usually will compare how much is it on Vital Check, how much is it if I order it from the county or the state. I'm gonna show you how I get to those. If I type in Abermill County, Virginia, then I'm going to get things like Facebook pages and visiting sites, stuff like that. That's not gonna help me as much as a genealogist. So what I do is I type in the words Abermill County VA for Virginia Wiki or I'll type in genealogy. And within the first three results will be right down here, the family search wiki. If I typed in Abermale County, Virginia genealogy, I probably would have this one first. So if I click on that, then I'm gonna go to the wiki page that we talked about a minute ago. But right here, I have that county courthouse information. And I can reach out to the county courthouse about ordering maybe a birth, marriage, or death record. But I can also reach out to them about maybe ordering a probate record or something else that I'm not finding elsewhere. And if I click on this link, then I will go to the county court website, okay? And I can go up here to government, and I can go to the different court, the clerk's offices, things like that. Sometimes on the Family Search Wiki pages, you even get even additional information. See like right here, it says that the clerk of the circuit court has the marriage records and the land records, divorce, probate, and court records. So that would tell me where I needed to go for that information. Next, we have Maps of US. This is a US best based website, obviously. Um, but there's a lot of other websites, maps.com, .org, whatever, mapsofus.org is where you want to go. This site is so cool. Totally free. Love it, love it, love it. They do have the ads, which can be a little irritating. But if you scroll down, you'll see they have different types of maps that you can look at. They have state maps, international maps. I guess I'm wrong. I guess they do have international stuff too. So check that out and historical atlases, which can be great. But I'm gonna just take you to the state maps because this has one of my favorite features. If I scroll down, I see the different counties and then I have some other little articles that I could look at. But if I wanna go, for instance, to Kansas, I click on Kansas and then scroll down to this interactive history. Okay, this is where you wanna go, interactive. And then I see the county map and I can even click on one of these counties, all right, or I can scroll down further to this interactive map of Kansas County formation history. Now, if your family lived in this area of Kansas, it was in 1855 WAS, which if I scroll down here is Washington. But if I look at 1870, now that has been subdivided into many different counties and I could fill in the blanks in between here. And if I go all the way to 1886, we see even further changes. Why does this matter? Records are held in the county in which they were created. So if your family lived in this area of Kansas, we can see that it may have been 
multiple different counties over a period of time. And if your family lived there for generations, you need to be looking in each one of those counties where that land was located throughout that course of time to find the records that you're looking for. Very important, and I love how easy it is on this site. All right, the next one is Fold 3. Fold 3 is awesome for military records, particularly in the United States, but also Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. They have some military records for all of those sites. This is a paid site. But if you want to do military research, you got to go to Fold 3. Now, Fold 3 is owned by Ancestry, and it is part of that Ancestry All Access subscription. So if you want to be looking at newspapers, and if you want to look at the military records, it might be worth bumping up to an all access subscription on Ancestry because in the long run, it's gonna save you money. However, there's, a, there's an awesome thing. You can now share your subscription with four other people, with other family members or friends. So the four of you, the five of you actually could divide the cost of that subscription and have access to all three of these websites and it didn't cost you maybe as much as it would have if you'd signed up separately. So a way to save yourself some money. All right, we're at number 12. We're at Google Books. Google Books is a great website, and it's a great website because a lot of times we have books that were written about our families. Maybe I could find some books about Stevenson's in a particular location, or maybe your family was included in these county biographies that were really popular around the turn of the century. From about 1880 to about 1920, um, they would do these biographies of particular counties and they would ask people if they wanted to be included and the people could put a little blurb about their family. And sometimes you find origins, you find ki all kinds of interesting information about the family. It's not always 100% true because it was submitted by the individual and we tend to put ourselves in the best light, but it's a great resource. Google Books will tell you if the book is out of copyright and they'll have it on their website and you can view the book right there. Or it will tell you where you can buy the book if it's something that you're interested in. So use Google Books. Now I've got two bonus sites here that go with Google Books. The first is Half the Trust. Now Half the Trust is another place where it has a lot of these books online. These are the ones that are out of copyright. And so you can take a look at these books that you might find there on their website. If you don't find it on Google Books, you might find it there. And the other place where you might find it is Internet Archive. This is archive.org, not archives.gov. This isn't the National Archives site. This is archive.org. Again, this is US records. But you can find a lot of books that are there and you can also find um, some photographs and audio and video clips and things like that that could be really interesting for your family history research. Plus they have the Wayback Machine which shows you websites back in time which can be helpful in genealogy research too. So Internet Archive, good site. All right, next we have MyHeritage. Now this is a paid for site. I didn't include this last time, but I got to because I go there so frequently for records. They have a lot of terrific web records on this site that you won't find elsewhere. They have a lot of European records and they're based in Jerusalem. So they have a lot of Jewish records. So if your family is Jewish, if your ancestors are Jewish, um, then you want to definitely check into this website. You might want to do one website for a little while and then another website for another while. The next website is Find My Past, which is similar. On both My Heritage and Find My Past, you can build trees like you can on Ancestry. Find My Past has a lot of British records and they also have quite a few New York records. So you might want to check out Find My Past. Now, do you want to pay for all three of these websites, Ancestry, My Heritage, and Find My Past? Probably not. Another little trick that you can do is you can go into your local family search library or affiliate library and there they have free access to these websites. You can't log into your own account on those websites for free and like build a tree there, but you can search their records. It's a library edition, pretty awesome. So go to those family search affiliate libraries locally around you. You probably have one not far from you and you can get onto these sites for free. We're at 15 now and this website is the free newspapers website. Chronicling America is a fantastic website to look at newspapers and it's free. It has two things in it. One, you can search for an individual like you would on newspapers.com. You can put in their name, you can narrow it down by state, and this is a US site. 
um, by time period. You can do that. You can search for a name. But another thing that a lot of people don't know is this newspaper directory right here on the right. This allows you to search for what newspapers were published in a particular location. I use this all the time. So if I want to find out what papers were published in Jefferson County, Kansas in a particular time period, then I can look at them and I can see who holds what editions of which papers were there. This is super helpful. I'm not going to go into the details on this. I do have another video that talks about newspapers where I illustrate this. Check that out if this is something that interests you. Sometimes only one or two editions of a little local newspaper survived, and this is how I find where they can be located. All right, the Bureau of Land Management. This one is not where you want to go. Don't go to blm.gov. That's not where you want to go for genealogy research. You want to go to glowrecords.blm.gov. G-L-O-R-E-C-O-R-D-S dot B-L-M dot gov. Now, all of the links to all of these websites are in the video description below. So you can click on them and it will take you straight here. Why do you want the differences? This is where the land patents are held. And so you want to look at your land patents. It also has field notes and survey plats. This awesome image is not copyright protected. And if you can find a map like this that shows where your ancestors lived, it's awesome. And you can put it in your family history books. Land patents. Let's talk about land for just a minute. When land was originally obtained by the government, it was in the form of a patent, whether it was given for military service or for money. It was in the form of a patent. After the land is transferred after that, then it's going to be in deeds, and I usually find those on Family Search. There's a couple other places too, but go to Family Search first for deeds. Does this have all patents? No. It doesn't. And the reason that it doesn't is some of the patents issued in the United States were issued prior to it becoming a separate country and they were issued by the British. So those patents are frequently held in like state archives. For instance, Virginia holds a bunch of the original patents for land in Virginia. So keep that in mind when you're looking for land patents. But this land, this site is awesome. And if you haven't been here, you need to go. All right, now we're getting into DNA. DNA Painter, love DNA Painter. This is a free website. Now they have a couple of features that you could pay extra for, but for the most part, it's free. He's really working hard to commit it to being free. And there are so many things on here. Last year, I mentioned Blaine Bettinger's DNA relationships chart. That's here now. And it's here with not only do you get to see the image, which is what you got on Blaine's site, but you can enter in the amount of DNA that you share with somebody and it will give you and it'll highlight the people that are the most likely people that it could be, whether it's like a first cousin or whatever. Awesome. They also have the WATO tool, W-A-T-O, which stand for what are the odds? And that gives you basically what are the odds of a relationship between you and this person. There's a bunch of other tools on this website. Fantastic website. Thank you so much for making it free for people. The next page that I use a lot that I didn't include last time are white pages. If I'm doing DNA research for somebody, I need to find out where people are now because I work my way back to figure out your most recent common ancestor, but then I gotta figure out like if I'm doing an adoption prop project, where these people might be now. And I use white pages. There's a lot of sites like white pages that are not too expensive. White pages is pretty cheap. It's the one I use. Anyway, a, a site like that can be really helpful for genealogy research when you're trying to work your way back down. All right, this next site I don't use quite as often, so it's further back on my list. It's Genealogy Bank. Genealogy Bank is another newspaper site. It's a great place to go. They have a lot of great newspapers there. I actually access this for free through my local library. So I log into my library website from home and I can go onto this website. I can also go to Fold3 on that with that library as well. So you may wanna check about your local library and see what things you can maybe use for free through your uh, membership card at that library. Pretty cool. All right, my next one, we're at number 20, is the Social Security Administration Freedom of Information Act request page. Why? How often do you see a death, um, a Social Security death record or a Social Security application record? And you're like, oh, cool. Well, there could be more. 
What you want is the original Social Security application because the application asked them who their parents were. Now, Social Security didn't start until the mid-1940s. So we're talking about people that lived during that time period from mid-1940s on that may have gotten a Social Security card. Sometimes the parents' names are redacted because the person is not very old and for privacy purposes, they don't know that the parents have passed and they're kind of error on the safe side. But it's a great way to get a Social Security application. They used to be 24 bucks or 21 bucks. They recently bumped it up to 30, um, but that's really pretty cheap. So Social Security applications are a much overlooked treasure trove. The next one is the National Archives website. There's a lot of digital information on the National Archives website that can be really helpful to you. There's a lot that's there that's not been digitized yet at the National Archives, but I live on the other side of the country from the one in DC. So I love to see what I can view at home that's digital, and this is where I attack that. Not always the easiest website to navigate, but it's a really helpful one and one that I do recommend. All right, next is Google Translate. Google Translate, yep, well, I use it. Um, if I'm looking at records from my French side of my family or my Swiss side of my family and I, or, or I'm doing research for somebody and I'm in Hispanic records, I'll take the text and put it in here and translate it to English. With ChatGPT, that may be getting easier, but right now this is what I do. So, works for me. All right, this next website is the Enumerator Instructions. Frequently with census records, we don't know why they asked a particular question or what an answer means. The enumerator instructions will tell you exactly what the different choices were, why they asked particular questions and what responses and what a particular word means. So you might run into something in a census record that you don't get. Go to the enumerator instructions and you can figure it out. This is really underused and it can be very helpful in genealogy research. So love this website. And last but not least, we have Black's Law Dictionary. Yes, a law dictionary. Now Black's Law Dictionary, you want the fourth edition or sooner. It does a fantastic job of talking about the laws and the legal terms. When we're looking at deeds and wills, particularly wills, we may see something that we just don't understand what it means. This is where you find out. And it's really important that you do so because you might be making assumptions that are incorrect. And what I love about this website, I can view Black's Law Dictionary here, I can look at it right here, or I can even download it to my computer. So Black's Law Law Dictionary is a great place to go. Well, that's it. That's my 25 most used websites. Quick and dirty, man, we ran through this quickly, but these are the sites that I use most often, and I hope they're helpful to you. They make all the difference in my family history research and the genealogy work that I do for clients. Now, if you have other sites that you really like, please put them in the comments because there are a myriad of them out there. And I would love to know the sites that you use because with genealogy, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And I'm always learning about new sites that other people share with me, which I greatly appreciate. So put some sites in those comments. And if you're interested, these videos right over here are five sites that you may not know about. There were some of those a little bit more unusual, often overlooked ones. Have a great day.